All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about a lot of that storminess and just the overall pattern that we're gonna be dealing with over the next few weeks. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I wanna know if you were stuck with it only being one single season for the rest of your life, what would it be? Which season would you choose? Winter, summer, fall, or spring? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video and first things first, we're taking a look here at the storm reports from yesterday because we did have an enhanced risk. We did get that upgrade by the way, inside this light risk to an enhanced risk. We had zero tornado reports thankfully, but we had 29 wind reports, damaging wind reports. And then we had 46 hail reports as well. Most of those occurring within the state of Kansas. Uh, so thankfully, again, like I said, no tornadoes. Uh, but it was obviously a still a pretty significant severe weather day yesterday, as anticipated, obviously, with an enhanced risk. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the categorical outlook for today, which is obviously Sunday, May 9th. We're already just flying through the month of May. And we have an enhanced risk upgrade again. Like I said, I thought today was likely. Yesterday was kind of a more of like a 50-50 shot or so. Uh, but as you can see, we have two, or sorry, three areas of general thunderstorm risks. One there for Florida, one there for the Rockies, and then one there for kind of the South Central and, and through the Ohio Valley regions. Very, very large area there. We have two marginal risks, one there for New Mexico and Texas, as well as a little bit of Colorado. And then one very large one there that, again, extends basically from the Deep South all the way up through the Ohio Valley. Within there, we have a slight risk of severe weather, and that's where we begin to see that scattered severe weather occur. And then in that in that orange region, that's where we have the enhanced risk, and that's where it becomes a little bit more widespread. So let's take a look at this individual outlook, shall we, uh, real quick. This is our damaging wind outlook, and as you can see, we have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location for two separate regions there. The one there in New Mexico, northeastern New Mexico, and then we see one there for Texas all the way up through the Ohio Valley uh, as well. Now, we do have a 15% chance within 25 miles of a given location of damaging wind within that yellow region, and then a 30% chance, which is rather large there within that red area there. For the hail regions, it's pretty much the same. It just extends a little bit less far east. So this cuts off around uh, Tennessee and Kentucky, whereas the uh, wind risk, it went all the way up in through West Virginia and Ohio. So that one extended a lot further. We again have two 5% chance regions, one 15% chance region, and then one 30% chance region. But we also have a uh, hatched area there, as you can see, and that is where two inch diameter hail or larger is going to be possible. Uh, so that is something we're obviously going to need to watch out for very, very closely. Our tornado risk is a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location here within the green, and then a 5% chance of tornadoes within 25 miles of a given location there within the brown region. So we're going to be watching. Uh, diligently, obviously, and you're going to want to pay attention for those potential tornado warnings uh, so you could obviously take cover and, and just heed those warnings 100%. Uh, now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the modeled guidance for today's severe weather threat. All right, now here is the high temperatures, and as you can see, for most of these severe weather regions, uh, we're going to be in the 70s, the mid to upper 70s here, which is obviously going to be sufficient. We usually look for anything between 65 and 80 for the most prime severe weather conditions, and this is obviously right in the middle of that, so that's perfect uh, for severe weather development, unfortunately. Here's our dew points. This will also be nearly perfect for severe weather development. In the 70s, lower 70s, upper 60s, that is basically that threshold we look for. We look for at least 60 degree dew points, typically, uh, but obviously lower 70s will obviously cut it. Now, the, the CAPE, which is basically a mathematic equation between the temperature and the dew point, is obviously going to be quite high given the dew points and the temperatures. So we're at, we have widespread 2,000 to 3,000, even 3,000 plus amounts on the very, very front end of that cold front, uh, which is just going to lead to premium development conditions for these thunderstorms. Somewhere on the screen, apparently there are 6,000 Cape, likely in southern Texas there, uh, or northern, uh, or, or the areas bordering Mexico and te uh, Texas there. Uh, potentially even just south of Dallas there, I see some purples as well, which is going to be in the three to four to five, even more than that, you know, Cape sections. Uh, we're looking at a significant amount of Cape here. Uh, which again is about it's it's thunderstorm fuel, so they eat this up and they use it to develop. I always I'm always trying to make sure I remind you guys of the educational facts about this stuff. 
Our shear, which is going to lead to wind and tornadoes being a little bit more likely the higher it is, is going to be moderate to high. So we see the reds and the browns. That's kind of on the higher end of things. Um, so we're going to be watching for that very closely as well. That's what's going to lead to those tornadoes being possible. Let's take a look at that simulated radar real quick. And first things first, we're taking a look at about, well, maybe 6 a.m. or so here on Sunday. Let's just take that towards about 2 p.m. And you can see there is some showers and thunderstorms around from northern Mississippi, Tennessee. You can see some of that developing for Arkansas. But as we reach about, I would say, 6 p.m. or so here today, you can see they begin to become a lot more potent here for Texas, as well as portions of Arkansas, Missouri, even Tennessee up there, you can see. And then by the time we're taking a look at about 10 p.m., again, widespread throughout Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, and Tennessee. Uh, and, and then even extending in through 2 a.m., there's going to be thunderstorms around. So this is going to be kind of more of an evening through and overnight threat that we're going to be watching very, very closely. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the severe weather threat, which is a little bit more minimal for tomorrow. And then we're going to quickly show you guys that snowfall total with that snowstorm that we're expecting for the Rockies. And then finally, we're going to update you guys on that Arctic air. All right, now here is the categorical outlook for tomorrow. As you can see, we have a general thunderstorm risk that extends from Washington State all the way down to Florida and back up through the Delmarva. So this is a horseshoeing general thunderstorm risk that is going to extend from the West Coast to the East Coast, or at least touching a West Coast state, not the actual West Coast. Uh, we do see two marginal risks going on, one there for Virginia and North Carolina, as well as a little bit of South Carolina, and then one down there for the Deep South and Texas as well. Uh, and then we even have a slight risk there for South Central Texas there, uh, that is going to be our slight risk region, and that is where, again, we expect uh, scattered severe weather to be possible within that yellow region. Now, for the wind outlook, we have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location here within these two green regions there, and then a 15% chance there in the yellow. For the hail, it's almost the same thing, except we have a hatched risk again down there for that yellow region. That is where, again, 2-inch diameter hail or more is possible. And then for our tornado outlook, we have one 2% chance region within 25 miles of a given location there for Texas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and a little bit of the panhandle of Florida there as well. All right, now here is that total snowfall here. If you're anywhere in the blues, you're expecting maybe two to six inches of snow. So that does reach some lower elevation regions. If you're in the purple, six to 10. And then if you're in the pinks, we're looking at 10 to 20 inches of snow. So that is going to be reserved mostly for those higher elevation regions for Colorado, Utah, Wyoming, and Montana as well. A very interesting to see snow this late in the season. Let's update you guys on that Arctic blast. And as you can see, a lot of that cold air is charged up to the north. As you can see, it's just hanging out up there. Uh, and that warm to the south is kind of fighting back. But by the time we reach about Wednesday time frame, you can see that this is definitely not going to be the case anymore. Those widespread greens throughout the south and northern eastern United States uh, that's going to be 10 to 15 degrees below normal temperatures, which is obviously a significant departure from your normal temperature there. Uh, very warm temperatures out west, indicating, again, that positive PNA. By time we reach about uh, Sunday the 16th, you can see that we're going to finally see a little bit of a break in that pattern. Lighter blue showing up for the east, uh, and those oranges are moving further and further eastward there. So very, very interesting pattern switch up that's finally happening by the time you reach the 16th. And by the time you reach the 19th, you can see warmer than normal conditions will enter into the eastern United States and colder than normal conditions should be in the western United States. I'm sure a lot of you think this is very, very good news because I know many folks have been waiting and waiting for a warm up because of how cold it has been this May and portions of this April as well. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at a five out of six. Uh, we've only talked about a very few long range things, but mostly talking about today and tomorrow. So my confidence is going to be on the higher end of things, obviously, given the fact that we're talking about the shorter range. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think we will see an earlier start to the hurricane season, an average start, or maybe a later start than what is typical? And James Marr said, I believe the hurricane season will start a little later than usual. And I don't really have an opinion yet on that, but I do think that that is possible that we will be right around normal. So slightly Later or slightly sooner than normal uh, wouldn't surprise me whatsoever there. Good comment of the day there. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Bembenek, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry LePan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J., Luke Falego, Gary's, John Quilisi, and Dwight Phelan. 
If you would like to be a part of this Patreon screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Weathertop Dogs, Hair Farms One, and Cat Fight. Thank you so much for supporting the channel over here, guys, as well. If you would like to join this, this uh, channel membership, you can do so by hitting that button next to the subscribe button. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to absolutely destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below. And also, be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.